What's up guys, Root from NoShow.com here today, bringing back some more Python tutorials. Oh man, today we're checking out some uh, some looping keywords like break and continue, and these are really interesting. When you're looping with like uh, for or while, sometimes you might need to manipulate the sort of repetition or the process that your program is going through, and these can be uh, these can be structured with keywords like continue or break. So uh, let's open up idle, and I'll show you what I mean. I'll drag it right on over here. Get ourselves started with a new program, a new window. Save this as a file.python for the moment. Get a shebang line going on. And here we go. I'm gonna do a I'm gonna start a for loop for i in range let's say twenty-five. Because that's a good number, you know, that's a nice number. I, I like the curves that they've got going on there. Alright, so for i in range twenty-five, let's print out we are at number, and then we'll concatenate the string value of i. We can run this with f5, and that looks pretty good. We get a full lengthy piece of idle here. We got go from number 0 and from number 24. Okay, that works. So now, just kind of like how the return keyword is exclusive to functions, the break and continue keywords are exclusive to loops. So if we uh, if we typed in break outside of a f of a, out of a loop, it'd give us an error. Uh, let me show you this here. Syntax error. There's an error in your program. Break outside of a loop, and this works the exact same way for uh, for continue. I'm thinking. Let's give it a go. F5. Yep. <clears throat> There's an error in your program. Continue is not properly in a loop. Now this works the same way as return too. I, d I don't think I ever showed you that, but if you're using return outside of a function, it le it yells at you too. It throws a temper tantrum. There's an error in your program. Return is outside of a function. So you're able to piece things together at this point, I'm sure. But just a uh, just a side note in case you guys didn't actually figure that out. <laughs> But this is the case here. While we're looping, we can test. We can use our if conditional statements. You can test what i is equal to. Let's say if i is equal to um, 20. And we'll create a new code block here. If i is equal to 20, let's, let's continue. So now what continue is going to do is anything after the keyword inside the loop will be skipped and it'll continue to the next iteration. So it won't display 20 when it's running this. It'll just it'll go from we're at number 19 and then it'll go to right it'll go right to we're at number 21 because 20 has been skipped. So let's try it. We're at number uh, would start at the top first of all. We're at number 0, 1 2 3 4 5 6 and this continues and when we get to 19 you don't see 20 here because we've continued. We have gone to the next iteration without even considering what's after. And uh, let's try this for things that are factors of 2. Yeah. I think. I mean, if they're divisible by 2. So, <clears throat> let's try it. We got... Okay, so we're, it's looking at odd numbers here. That's kind of interesting. <laughs> we're at number 1, we're at number 3, we're at number 5, we're at number 7, and we're at number 9. So it's not going to display anything that is an even number. So what if we take took a look at, a, at the other keyword now? What if we tested if i was equal to 20? First of all, let's... I'll show you what this does without this entire thing. And we can use a little bit of our comment magic that we learned in a few videos back. Okay. If we completely disregard this, we can have it go through 0 all the way to 25. And that works fine. But what if we do, if i is equal to 20 and we break, what break will do is literally break out of the loop. It will stop testing it completely. So let's uh, print program has started. I'm going to give ourselves a little bit of a notification when we're looping and when we're not looping. And we'll little, put a little bit of a tab here, just like we did in the previous tutorial, so it looks kind of fancy. So let's see how this works without our little break keyword, first of all. If we do uh, F5, program is started, 
Program is ended. Okay, slick. So now let's test. If i is equal to 20, let's break the loop. Let's stop counting. We go from 0, and keep counting up every now and again, all the way to 19, and then we stop. So now we can look at this in an interesting way. We can print i ended at... We concatenate on the string value of i. I ended at 20, because we've broken out of the loop. But if we don't have this, it'll end at 24, just the way it should. Now what if we continue to go back to our... Uh, if i divided by... If the remainder of 2 is equal to 0, we can continue. We can still have this, and we're... We'll have all these 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, but it's still going to get to 24, even though it's only displaying 23. Because the number is still being counted, it's just not being displayed because we're skipping that iteration with the, this continue keyword. So when you look at these two in conjunction, continue and break, you can do some pretty interesting stuff to your loops. And this doesn't have to be with, uh, with a for loop. You could use a while loop. While, uh, let's get some variables here. Counter equals 20, limit equals, if I can type things correctly, limit equals 25. While counter is less than limit, you can kill the for loop. Now we have this exact same thing. Program has started. Oh, we have to add it. Oh, let me, uh, uh oh, uh oh. Gotta kill Python before it comes to, before it comes to hurt us. P kill, P kill Python. Here we go. Holy mother of God. P kill idle. Oh, this is an emergency, kids. Oh man. All right. So see, this is why you should always, always add to your while loops, so you don't get stuck in an infinite loop and have your computer start crying and like wet itself. But I think you guys understand what I've been trying to get at here despite these little mishaps. If you were to do this with the while keyword, you can still have that exact same, um, let's see, output. You, it's, you can use those keywords in either the while loop or the for loop. You can use continue and break, and they have the same functionality. They do the same thing. So, uh, thank you guys for watching, though. Thank you for, uh, for sticking with me, even though I had a little bit of a mishap here at the end. Uh, it's a little embarrassing, though, to have my computer piss its pants. But, hey, uh, that's what programming can do to you if you don't do it correctly and you don't pay attention to what you're doing. So, don't ever, don't ever listen to me. <laughs> but, uh, thank you guys for watching. If you could give me a like, maybe a comment, maybe, maybe favorite, maybe subscribe, I don't know, just, just, uh, just some ideas, just some, uh, just some ideas. <laughs> Have a great day, guys. Goodbye.